Okay, in this video, we are going to investigate the function x squared minus x minus ln x. So we will do the usual business. The increasing, decreasing, local minimum, local maximum, concave up, concave down, <laughs> and all the business. And then the point of inflection, you guys know the deal already. Anyway, before we start anything, we see that we have an ln x right here. That's not that great. We better state the domain before we move on. So let's go ahead and put this down. Here we have x as an input, so we have to make sure that x has to be greater than 0. So we cannot plug in any negative numbers for this right here, right? Anyway, let's deal with the increasing, decreasing first. To do so, we need the first derivative. And right here we get 2x minus 1 minus 1 over x. And we want to find the critical numbers, etc., right? So let's go ahead and combine this first. And I will just multiply this and that by x on the bottom and on the top, and then x here and here. So all together, we have x on the denominator. And then we have 2x squared and minus x, and then minus 1. And from here, notice for f prime of x to be 0, we're trying to find the critical numbers. This is the only situation that we have to care. Because the denominator is x, and we already say that x has to be greater than 0, zero right? So the bottom cannot be 0 in the first place. So you don't have the doesn't exist situation for the derivative. Anyway, f prime of x to be 0, all we have to do is to set up top, then the 2x squared minus x minus 1 to be 0. So for this real quick, we factor it, 2x and x, and I need to have negative 1 and 1 somewhere. I think negative 1 goes here, and then positive 1 goes here, right? From here, we get 2x plus 1 equals to 0. From here, we say x is equal to negative 1 half. And likewise, from here, x minus 1 is 0. That means x has to be 1. But guess what? This right here doesn't matter because it's not in the domain. I'll just tell you, not in the domain. So you can get rid of this, right? Therefore, this is, in fact, your only critical number. And then I will just draw a number line. We are going to start at 0, and in fact, we don't include 0 because right here, we cannot have 0 in the ln. And I'm going to make a mark at 1, and I will do the first derivative test. I, I just have to plug in a number that's in between of 0 and 1, that's a 1 half. Plug in 1 half into the factorative form, maybe it's like this, or maybe here, up to you. So I will do that, plugging 1 half into here, this is positive, and then 1 half minus 1 is negative, and technically I should also plug in 1 half in the x in the denominator. But x is positive anyway. <laughs> so altogether, you just do that, you get negative derivative right here, right, negative derivative. And then you plug in a number that's bigger than 1, so you can plug in 17 or something, up to you. Into here, you see this is positive, and then positive, divided by the x, positive, so everything turns out to be positive, like that. Therefore, based on all the things we have done so far, I will tell you the original function f is increasing, let me actually just put it down right here, right? I will write this down, f is increasing on the interval from 1 to infinity. So I just put on 1 to infinity, and then also say f is decreasing from 0 to 1. So let's just put down this, and then we are done. But do we have any local minimum, local maximum? This right here, we have negative derivative, and then it changes to positive when x is equal to 1. So remember, negative first derivative tells us the function, the original function, is decreasing, and then it changes to increasing because we're past the first derivative. That means I can tell you f has local minimum at x is equal to 1. This right here is a local minimum. 
And we don't have any local maximum, so I'm not going to put that down. This is all we have. These are the information we can talk about uh, from the first derivative of the function. All right, now, let's talk about the concavities. So I need a second derivative. And I'm not looking at this, right? I'm looking at this. So I will just do this for you guys, actually. Remember, f prime, the original, the, deriv the first derivative is 2x minus 1 minus x to the negative 1 power. I just want to write the x to the negative 1 power like this, so that it's easier for us to take the derivative. And this is the second derivative. We get 2, and this is 0, and then bring the power to the front, minus 1. And we get positive, and we have 1 over x squared, because that's negative 2 exponent, becomes this now. And now, I'm going to set the second derivative to be 0, so I can find the numbers that we care. And let's see, we have this for the second derivative, and in fact, you will see that if you move the 2 to the other side, we have 1 over x squared. Actually, let's do this, actually. Let's multiply x squared here, x squared here. We get 2x squared plus 1 over x squared. Well, on the top, we have 2x squared plus 1. But the truth is, if you try to solve 2x squared plus 1 equal to 0, 2x squared is equal to negative 1. No solutions, right? So, in fact, you don't have to worry about this. I will just tell you um, f double prime of x is never 0. We tried it. It didn't work. <laughs> Of course, we don't talk about complex numbers. Well, the truth is, this right here, f double prime, is in fact always positive. Let's just put on note right here. f double prime is always positive, right? So, 2 plus 1 over x squared, this right here is always positive, so you don't have to And let me actually first, and let me actually write down the first derivative again right here, but already as f prime of x equals to 2x minus 1, and then minus x to the negative 1 power. I just want to bring the x up so that it's easier for us to take the second derivative, right? So that's easier for us to take the derivative again. So now, for the second derivative, f double prime. The derivative 2x is 2, the derivative negative 1 is 0. The derivative of this, you bring the power to the front and then minus 1. Negative times negative is plus, and then you get 1 over x squared. Because this is negative 2 power, you bring that down back to the denominator. And usually, we will try to see if there's any place that the second derivative is 0. But if you set this equal to 0, <laughs> you're not going to get any solution because of the following. Notice that we have 2. This is the positive 2. And then here, x squared, it's always positive. Positive plus positive, this right here will always be positive. So let me just make a note right here. If you really want to solve it, you're not going to get any real solution <laughs> because this right here, it's always positive. So I will write down f double prime is always positive, all right? So that saves us some time. <laughs> what does this tell us, though? Well, I will just tell you f double prime is, sorry, sorry, sorry. What does this tell? I will tell you that the original function f is concave up all the time. Right? Because the second derivative is always positive on the domain. So f is always concave up on the domain. So I will just tell you guys, this is why the domain matters. We have to put down 0 to infinity. right? And f is never concave down on this domain. So you don't have to write that down. And because f is always concave up, we don't have a point of inflection either. So I will just tell you, 
guys, uh, maybe right here. No point of inflection. So this right here are pretty much the information. <laughs> so it depends on how you want to write it. I think this is pretty good. And in the end, perhaps, since we have all the info, let's make a quick graph of the original function. Y is equal to the original, which is f of x. And that's the equation over there, right? First of all, maybe you want to calculate what's f of. Well, 0 doesn't really work. So you can do the limit and things like that. y is equal to f of x, and this right here, we are talking about the graph of the original. First of all, I cannot plug in 0 into the original, but let's talk about the limit. So notice, if I take the limit as x approaching 0 plus of the function, which I will write down x squared minus x minus ln x, you will see this right here is 0 and then minus 0, so it's 0, but you talk about negative ln of 0 plus. That's pretty much the part you have to focus on. And then ln of 0 plus, this gives us negative infinity, but because of this negative, all in all, we get past infinity. Therefore, when x is approaching 0 plus, the value of the function is you know, right here. It's going toward infinity like that. And let's just put this down. Oops, this should. And let's just put this down, and I will erase this. And I will also just get some more points. It seems that we care about 1, so I'll put on 1 as well. Notice, f of 1 is plugging 1 into there. We get 1 squared minus 1 minus ln 1. But guess what? 1 minus 1 is 0, right? This is just 1. And then ln 1 is also 0, so this is 0. This means when x is equal to 1, the graph is at 0 right here. So you can expect the function. In fact, it's increasing from 1 to infinity, okay? But it's decreasing from 0 to 1. And it's always concave up. So here's the deal. You pretty much have the function goes like this. And hits this point, though. This point is from our computation. We have the point 1, 0. You have to keep in mind it's always concave up. During this portion from 0 to 1, the function was decreasing. And then after 1, the function becomes increasing. So you just pretty much just goes up like this. And you can also do a real quick check. If you take the limit as x approaching infinity of x squared minus x minus ln x. Let me tell you, x squared will be dominating the rest. You will actually end up with past the infinity. So the deal is, this right here will actually go up, right? Um, anyway, uh, I'll leave this to you guys if you want to do more detailed work on that. But this is it. It's like, here you have a vertical acetal, a vertical acetal at 0, and then it's concave up all the time, and you have a local minimum, and then this part is decreasing, and then during that part is increasing. That's it.